It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about setting up your DDWRT router as a quote unquote dumb AP but also having VLANs available from PFSense going through that router so that you can have multiple Wi-Fi SSIDs and really keep your wireless devices separated and segregated on your network. Now it's taken me a while to get this set up. I have gone through a lot of pain trying to figure out how to get this to work correctly. I finally found some really good articles out there on the DWRT forums and wikis and was able to kind of piece things together to get this to work. And I'll say now, VLANs are very hardware dependent. It's going to 100% depend on what your hardware is as to how you're going to set this up. Now, most of the steps that I'm going to show you will be exactly the same. But you may run into a couple of issues in a couple of places and I'll try to point those out so it's easy for you to recognize where you might have to make a change or go look something up for your specific hardware just to make sure things are going to work smoothly. Hopefully most of this is going to be exactly the same and then you'll have to make one little change about at the end potentially just depending on what your hardware is but I'll kind of point that out as well. But going through this shouldn't take us very long now that I've figured out how to do it. It was about three, three or four months of work of me going through this, but I think uh, I've got it. I feel really good about it. I was excited when I finally got things to connect and I started doing some testing and things were actually doing what I expected. We're going to go through setting this up. We're going to get everything ready and I'll kind of show you where we're starting. Now, I do want to say, if you have not looked at my videos on setting up and installing PFSense or OpenSense, please go do that first. I'll have them linked in the description and the show notes. So we're going to get to the setup of your DDWRT router for VLANs right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally... If you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. I want to start here in PFSense, just to kind of give you a review of what we've done in the past. So previously I'd set this up for a business. Now I'm using this in my home, so I've got it kind of set up for the home. And you can see here my VLANs. I've got one called Local Servers. I've got this one for the kids. I've got one for IoT. And I've got one for Guest. Now I'll go over here to the interface assignments and I'll kind of show you what you're wanting to do. First thing you want to do is jump over to your VLANs here. And you want to add any VLANs that you want to use. Now, I originally started with VLANs 10, 20, 30, 40. I found that VLAN numbers above 15 were just not working for me in DDWRT. So let's just presume that you need to have up to 15 VLANs. If you've got to go above that, we'll, we'll kind of look at that later on how you would set that up. And I'll keep working on that. But for now with DWRT, it was really kind of just giving me a lot of headaches. So I kind of stuck with the... 3 through 15 numbers and I'll show you why that is but so now I've got my VLANs and I've numbered them 3, 4, 5, and 6 and you can see I came back and kind of did this one later that's why it's at the bottom of the list once you create those VLANs you need to come back over to this interface assignments tab and there's this little add button of course it would be up here but you would click add pick that VLAN and it's going to give you names like opt1, opt2, opt3, opt4 if you click on that name then it jumps you over to the interface tab for that VLAN you just created. You need to make sure it's enabled. This is something that I was forgetting to do when I was kind of redoing my stuff yesterday and it was just driving me crazy. Why isn't this working? It should be working. Oh yeah, I forgot to enable the interface. You're going to come here and pick static IPv4 and I'm going to enlarge this because it's pretty small. Uh, you're going to come here and pick static IPv4 and then you're going to move down and you're going to give it an IP address that is something different from the IP address of your PFSense box. So in my case, on PFSense, it's 10100.0. So I made this one 10100.3. This is VLAN 3. And over here, I'm going to pick slash 24. So I want the 24, which means everything after the 3 is going to be usable. So every, every address that gets on this VLAN is going to get 10.100.3. And then it could be anything from 0, I think, 1 through 254, I believe is correct. So... That's a lot of addresses for a lot of devices. We're not going to use them all, but we've got that range to play with. Once you've done that, just come down here and click Save. You're going to do the same thing 
for every single interface that you've set up. So go here, and then you're going to click on the next one. Enable it, change the name to something that makes sense for what that VLAN is for. Don't leave it as opt one. Choose static IPv4, drop down here, give it an IPv4 address, and then again pick 24. If you want something more, you could pick 16, and that would be 10.100, and then everything here. But make sure you're staying in the private IP ranges when you do this. It's pretty important. Click save when you're done. So you're going to run through that. I've got a video that shows you how to do all this stuff. I'm just running through a review really quick. The next thing you want to do once you set up those, those, those four interfaces and enabled them is you want to come over here and you want to go to services DHCP server and here you'll see that you have one of each one of those listed so once it's enabled as an interface you'll see that it's listed here for DHCP servers click on your first one make sure to enable it this is the other place that I was forgetting to, to click the enable button I was going through everything else just forgetting like oh yeah I have to enable it don't, don't do like I did, don't make that mistake, make sure it's enabled before you even get started or you're just gonna frustrate yourself. But once you've enabled it, you're gonna come down here to this range and it's gonna show you, here's the range you can play with. You wanna pick a range where you want it to hand out IP addresses. So for each VLAN that you're thinking about, think about what do I really have on that VLAN? What's really gonna be on that VLAN at least to start off? Cause you can always change this range later. Here I said, you know what? I could potentially have 100 machines on this VLAN. I went ahead and went a little higher. I said 140. I went from dot 10 to dot 150. I could drop this down. I could make this much smaller if I wanted to. And then when I looked at the kids VLAN, I said, you know, what, what do I expect is really going to be there? They have several devices each, right? They have a tablet, they have a phone, they have a computer. So I said, okay, well, let's set that from 10 to about 50. That's 40 devices total on the kids VLAN. I could come and reduce that drastically just depending. IOT, I have a ton of IOT devices that use Wi-Fi. So I thought, you know what, I better make this pretty big. So I did, I mean, there's there's not this many, but I thought, let's make it big. Same thing when I come to guests, I'm like, how many guests am I gonna have at a time? Well, I have a pretty big family and sometimes we have big family gatherings. So I thought, you know what, they all wanna be on the Wi-Fi. I better make this big enough that it can handle, you know, a good number of people at, at any given point. Once you've set those up, you've enabled them, you've set that up, you've come down here and you've clicked on save. You should have everything pretty much ready, except now you've got firewall rules. So you want to go to firewall, click on rules. And again, you'll see all of those interfaces that you've enabled. You want to click on each one and you want to set up the rules. Now, the way that I've been doing it is I give it the first rule is pass everything. And then I start blocking access to the things I don't want it to have. And if you're worried about blocking, like I want to block all public IP addresses or all private IP addresses. I don't want devices to be able to talk to each other. Go check out the PFSense and the OpenSense forums because there are some people who've done that in a really smart way. They use aliases, then they put in those ranges for those public IP addresses, and then they just come in and set the alias as a blocked thing. And now they can get the internet and that's it. And it's really a smart way to do it and very, very cool. So you might want to do something like that on your guest network, for instance. So here you can see I'm not allowing the guest network to get to anything else on my, on my network. But the kids are only blocked from the guest network because the kids want to access the media server. They want to access the cameras that are on the IoT or be able to control things in the house. So for me, it makes sense for them to have access to those things. I don't want IoT stuff getting to my my guests, to my kids, or to my local servers. It should only be able to go to the internet. I could also probably just block the LAN just to keep it really good. Um, but for each one of these, you want to set these rules up and make sure it's ready to go. Once you've done that, you've got your you've got your VLANs really ready and set. We're done on the PF Sense side. It's time to move to DDWRT. And this is where we get into the really good part. So when you open up DDRT, you're going to log in. You should have everything set. This should already be a dumb AP, quote unquote. You probably already have at least one wireless SSID and one you should have wireless security set up always. Don't ever leave open wireless. That's a bad practice. So once you've got wireless set up, we're going to jump over here and we're going to go to and we're going to go look at this switch config. So right now I've got ports three and four plugged in now. By looking at the back of my router, I have no idea which port is port three and which one is port four. It, it's a, in fact backwards from what you would think it would be, but I've turned my WAN port into just another switch port. It is not like it was when it was with the default firmware. So I've got all these ports and by default they come where WAN is on VLAN two and the rest of these are on VLAN one. Now, this doesn't really look like a VLAN when you're looking at it, it's just 
This is how the switch comes automatically set up inside of this router. So port four is the one that's going from the router to my laptop. Port three is the one that's going from PFSense to my router. Now I wanna set up VLANs and I want these to be tagged VLANs. So I'm gonna use port three as my VLAN port. So I'm gonna uncheck this part. I'm gonna come down here and check tagged for port three. Then I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna select ports. I'm gonna select VLAN three, four, five, and six, just like I had over here on PFSense. So if you come back to PFSense and you look at my VLANs, I've got three, four, five, and six. I want those to match. So that's why I'm picking three, four, five, and six here. Now, right now, this is the thing coming from my PFSense router. So if I'm gonna keep internet access, I'll have to move that over to port two or port one temporarily, and then I can move it back over because I don't have another NIC set up on my PFSense router right now. Otherwise, I could just plug in a different NIC to one of those. But for now, we've got this set up, that's great. Um, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna click on save. So in DWRT, when you click save, it just saves your changes, it doesn't apply them yet. Now, when you apply them, that's when things can kinda go funny. So we're gonna hit apply settings. This could take just a minute, so be patient. Even though that thing went away and it came right back up, be patient for a second because it may be doing some things on the router itself in the background. I can look at the front and see that I don't have all three lights on that I normally have, so I know something isn't finished yet. It's still kind of doing some changes, so I'm just gonna let it run for a second. Once that's done though, you should be able to continue with this setup. All right, now that we've given that a minute to save, we're gonna jump over here to wireless. And on the main wireless page, you, you may have more than one radio. So if you do, like I have a radio that's on in and I have a radio that's on AC, just pick whichever one you wanna start with and you're gonna start adding some more APs. So I'm gonna do this for the, for the 2.4 gigahertz uh, in first and then later I'll come back and hit the five gigahertz AC. But for now, for this demonstration, it's, it's fine. So I'm gonna hit this once twice and then three times and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to name these and you'll see that I've already used these names so they should come up but it's going to be Mac and I want that one to be kids and it has a little dash in so I know which frequency it is when I look at it Mac IoT and Mac guest and then we're going to save this and now, some people say, don't put any security on this during your testing. I disagree. So I'm gonna jump over to the security tab here for wireless. That one seems to already be filled. Let's go ahead and make sure it's right. I do want to be PA2. I don't know if it just assumed what I would want, but we'll go and we'll click on this and I've got these here. So I'm gonna just copy the right one for kids. Paste that in. Now, when you do this each time, hit save. For the next one, I'm going to make that WPAK, WPA2, PSK, and again, come over here. Let's just make sure that you get this set the same on each one of your routers. Now, the smart thing would be to just make a backup when you're all set up and put it on the other router and make the changes that are necessary just to make that router different. But in my case, since I'm showing you guys how I did this, I need to have these things written down. Plus, I can't remember them, and if I need to give them to somebody else, uh, I'm in a lot of trouble. So it's better to have these things in something like Vault Warden where it's protected. All right, we've got all that set. We're going to save. Oh, oh, I didn't hit save in between. Save. There we go. Now, we're going to apply those settings. Again, give this some time. Make sure it has time to get those settings set up. Make sure that it gets everything finished before you try to continue with the rest of the setup. So when I start looking, I start seeing those wireless options showing up over here, which tells me that this is probably ready for me to continue, which is great. So now that we've set these up and we've got them set up with those, we need to assign those to our VLANs. So we're gonna come back over to setup. We're gonna go to the networking tab. And here we're gonna create three more bridges. So we're gonna hit add, add, add. And we're gonna call this BR1. Next one's BR2, and the last one is BR3. 
So now that we've got those set, there's nothing else to set here. Everything should already be set, except maybe switch this to off. Right here, there we go. We're gonna go down here, we're gonna hit save. We're gonna hit apply. Again, even if it jumps back to here, just be patient because it's making we're making a lot of changes to the system. We're asking it to do some things that are advanced, so it's better to be patient than to try to rush through it. Now that we've got those things saved, we're going to go here. We're going to click on Add, and we're going to add six times. Now you might be saying, why are we adding this six times? It's really two times per additional bridge. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick bridge one. We're going to go here and we're going to pick our VLAN. So in this case, we want VLAN four. And then we're going to pick bridge one again. And we're going to pick WL 0.1. This is the kids network. So you have to kind of know this is 0.1. You can go back and look at this. In fact, if we save real quick, we're going to go over here to wireless. And if you look here at the one that says kids, you're going to see these virtual interfaces. They have this right here. So this is WL 0.1 and WL0.3. So you've got one, two, and three, and that's kids, IOT, and guests. So you have to keep those straight. But when you do, then you're gonna go back over here and you're basically gonna do what we were doing to set this up. So we're gonna set up these bridges. So we set up BR1 there, we're gonna do BR2. That's gonna be VLAN5. And then BR2. We're going to do 0 0.2. Then we're going to do BR3. And BR3. And here we're going to do VLAN 6. And 0 0.3. We're going to go down here and save. And we're going to apply. We're going to give that a minute again just to really take effect, make sure everything gets applied properly. You want to be patient as you go through this. So you can see this updating in this table as things get applied. So you can see now we've got this bridge set up that we wanted. So one thing we can do is we can go back to PFSense. We can double check here. So local servers is three. That's why we didn't use VLAN three. But we did want to use VLAN 4, 5, and 6, so that's kids, IoT, and guest, and that matches what we did over here, which is going to be kids, IoT, and guest. So we're set pretty well for how we've set this up. You want to make sure all these things are matching and doing exactly what we expect. I'm going to go back to this tab to remind you. Right now I'm plugged into 2 and 4, and I set up my VLANs on 3, which means right now I'm not getting anything on the VLANs. I'm just getting stuff out of this number two. So I'm going to unplug from two. I'm going to move it over to three. I'm physically moving that cable from one port to the other in the back. It takes a minute for the UI to update. Sometimes if you just go click save, it updates a little bit better. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to disconnect my wired. It's disconnected. Now these are just uh, little virtual interfaces that aren't doing anything. I'm going to try to connect and it's just going to spin because I don't have anything for it to connect to. So there's no point in me trying to connect that wired interface. I'm going to disconnect my normal wireless. I'm going to go down here to the kids network and I'm going to hit connect. Now this has a remembered password from yesterday. Should be the same password, but I'm not sure that this interface is going to be up and running yet. So there's one more change that we need to make. And in order to do that, I've got to switch back so I can turn on my wired connection. So I'm gonna move this back over. So I switch my wired back to port two for a minute so that I can access this again. Because when you start switching these things, you lose access to the interface. Um, it just happens because this is not a, supplying any IP addressing. You could make your IP address on your machine static and you wouldn't have to do that, but it's fine. 
Um, so what we need to do, because of this being a Broadcom chipset and not wanting to play nicely with the way that I'm setting up these virtual access points, uh, we need to go into administration and we're going to go to commands. In here, we need to put in some commands. Inside of commands, we're going to paste this in. So I'll have this again in the show notes. Again, this is only for if you have a Broadcom based router. These commands can change depending on your router type. You may not need these commands depending on your router type. So it's worth it for you to check this. If you initially try and it doesn't want to connect, definitely power cycle your router, like turn it off, wait about 30 seconds, turn it back on, give it time to boot up and try again. But if you're still not getting anything, then you may need to put these commands in. So what this does is it turns off the services and then it turns off each port. So in my case, my router has ETH0, ETH1, and ETH2, and the ETH1 and ETH2 are split between two actual ports. So what this does, it, it sleeps for 20 seconds. So basically once the router boots up, it waits 20 seconds, then it's gonna stop the service. It's gonna bring down all of the ports. It's gonna start the service and bring back up all of the ports. And basically that should get us where we're going. Now we're gonna do this as save startup. And you'll see it show up down here. You can edit it if you need to, uh, otherwise you can add other commands. So that's why this interface looks this way. But now that we've done that, we're going to just turn off the router. I'm going to wait about 30 seconds. I'm going to turn it back on. All right, I turned it off, uh, turned it back on. Everything came back up and I waited about another 30 seconds or so. And we're going to see, we should have the Wi-Fi signals here. And I do, I'm going to click, I'm going to try to connect to the Wi-Fi kids here. And it looks like we connected. And you can see there from the details, I do have a 10.100.4.10 address, which is what we expect when we're on the Wi-Fi Kids network. So if we go back over here and we look at our DHCP server, if we go over to the Kids Kids network, it is enabled and it is a 10.100.4.10 is the first address. So that's what I have pulled. So I'm now pulling addresses through the VLAN set up by PFSense, I've got my different VLANs set up, and I'm able to connect to those wirelessly through this router. This router is now putting out multiple wireless signals, and I'm actually getting an address. Now, I'm only connected to the Wi-Fi, so let's just make sure that we can actually go to an internet page, because these are all already open and cached, so let's try something. Let's go to my GitLab. It should come up with no problem. It looks like it loads just fine. If we click into one of the projects here. This is just one that I was messing with. Haven't even uploaded anything to it yet. There we go. Everything's loading up. It's fine. Nothing going on that's, that's going to cause me concern. So we've now set up our VLANs. We've got everything running through DDWRT with PFSense really being the boss and DWRT just being kind of the worker. So I've got four, five different, <laughs> I've got, well, I've got four different wireless networks that I can actually connect to. One is my LAN network. One is a guest network. One is the kids network. One is IOT network. Now I can go and start actually getting devices set up on the correct networks and make sure that they can talk the way that I expect. The kids should be able to see these other networks and I've already tested this. They can. The IoT network can't access any of these. And you can just test this with simple ping tests to make sure that you're not able to ping something on those other networks. So set those things up and then start doing some ping tests. Use a few test machines. It's really great. And I'm so excited that I got this working. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.